Anybody know McDonald's Big Mac song? To all be fat, but the last planet. Pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Oh, oh my. my. To all be fat, but the to all beef honey special sauce. To all beef cheesies. Yeah. Cheesy beefies. To all beef special sauce. Cheese, pickles, onions, oh, on sesame seed. I can do anything. Why can't I do this? Have you had your Mac today? Breakdown is brought to you by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? And welcome back outside Sun Devil Stadium. That is the Sears Trophy, a $40,000 Waterford Crystal football. It's been in Lincoln. It's going to stay in Lincoln. The Huskers win back-to-back -back national championships. Lee Corso and Craig James rejoin me. Guys, we talked about Florida's aggressive offense against Nebraska's aggressive defense. It's a strategy the Gators don't often face in the Southeastern Conference. Corners that come up, challenge the receivers, try to bump them. Linebackers that blitz a lot and try to get in Danny Werfel's face. It is a gambling situation. The Florida receivers told us all week, if they miss on the jam, look out. It's six. That didn't happen tonight. Well, Chris, the reason why they didn't get past them in the jam is the fact that Nebraska's blitz package forced Nebraska to play defensive backs man-to-man, -man, and he did a tremendous job. Here's a perfect example of number 20, Michael Brooker, playing man-for-man. -man. Now, you put the pressure on Werfel here, he throws off his back foot, and Brooker comes from nowhere, makes a good catch, and goes all the way. Craig, we talked about it in the game. The way to stop him is like LSU did. Bang him up front, make him throw the ball, off balance, and they work today. Of course, if you're Steve Spurrier, he's going to watch game film, and he's going to see this, and he's going to say, what if we'd have had time to throw the football, and what if that bump and run had been really challenged out there? But I'll tell you what, regardless of what happens in a football game with the air, you've got to be able to run the ball. In a championship game, now we have really seen etch it in this brain right here. If you can run the football, if you can play great defense, you have a chance. Nebraska played great defense defense in the Fiesta Bowl. Unbelievable. They can hold a team down that was averaging 173 yards to minus 28, minus 1.3 rushing. That'll make a running game coordinator puke the next day when he gets up and reads the newspaper. You have no shot at all playing against a team as good as the black shirts are when you have no running game, period. And it's a total team effort. The way they plug holes. Terrell Farley, the Big 8 newcomer of the year, comes in, plays a great game. You talked about Michael Booker. He, we thought coming into the game, was the more vulnerable of the two corners. Tyrell Williams being the more experienced guy, would they be able to pick on Booker? He said, no, not me. He stepped up. He played the great game. So a total team effort on defense. And offensively, once again, total domination by that Nebraska offensive line. They didn't have to wait until the fourth <laughs> quarter to wear them down. They were doing it in the first quarter. Well, and you know what, though? Mike, in defense of Michael Booker, I mean, and all other defensive backs in America, they're sitting at home watching this game. They're thinking, hey, we could all play defensive back for Nebraska tonight. <laughs> when you have people in the quarterback's face, it doesn't take four seconds to cover them. It's one, one thousand one and a half seconds and the guy's covered up he's gotten rid of it and he's in trouble let's take what florida learned okay as a football coach if i was coaching florida i learned one thing very much important at first part i got to get more physical i got to get my guys in the weight room and quit getting on the beach and starting banging some weights and get stronger <laughs> because they got banged up front and also i better develop a running attack because if i'm one dimensional against nebraska they'll beat me the same score in the sugar bowl next year well but you know what's interesting nebraska learned from florida teams about speed they speed. went recruit speed That's sure right. enough nebraska now everybody's going to learn from we talked a lot about michael booker the young cornerback he's standing by now with steve cypher steve you finally i mean first series doing catches the ball down the field and then something happens what do you do to shut them down well we keep first we keep focused you know everybody's gonna have their catches the great players have their catches we, we have a game plan you know we work with our game plan and we took care of business that's all you know that's all we had to do was take care of business what was that game plan the game plan was basically to take away the deep routes you know we know Jordan was going to be the main guy and he was going to be the person that they was going to go to in the crunch time so that's what we did we just focused on him and the rest he's not the whole team we focused on everybody and we practiced hard what did that offense have to say to you after this game was over? What did Florida think of your defense? Well, you know, they ain't have no choice but to think of my defense as, a, you know, as me as a, good, as a good back. So, you know, I want to give all the praise to God, and I want to say hi to my mom and everybody back home. Now I'm bringing this national, champ, national championship back home and MVP of the game, baby. And the defense the MVP of the game. How does this feel, this national title? It feels better good. Last year? Nah, this year right here is a lot better, a lot better. All right, thank you. Michael. All, right. All right, Steve. Thanks a lot. Hey, listen, 
It's two in a row. It's 36-1. That's right. They lose Tommy Frazier. They have a quarterback named Scott Frost, but you're right. With the people they have up front, you never rule out Nebraska for a three-peat. No. They can always run, and they will play defense. And watch like watch Colorado, that. though. Yeah. There's a lot of teams to watch. We'll talk about He's it next year down. later on. Coming up, a complete <laughs> breakdown of the Fiesta Bowl. Not Colorado. the complete breakdown that Florida had. As says we continue from Tempe and from Sports Center. It's the Huskers, 62-24. All right, Chris, when SportsCenter does an about face, more from Tempe, but we forward march into some hoop highlights. The 15th-ranked team in the country hosting BYU, the 25th-ranked team visiting racing country. Men, is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just for Men gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just for Men gel, the sure thing for a natural look. Have you heard what Jim's driving? What's he got now? You can see this thing. What an incredible machine. Sleek. Aerodynamic. Fast? Oh, yeah. That baby really moves. So what kind of engine does he have in that thing anyway? Nuclear reactor. You'd be amazed at what teenagers are driving these days. Right full rudder, steady course, 355, helm on. For more information, call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Time for a new cobalt blue bench-style front seat cover for your 78 Mercury Zephyr? Try to find that puppy at your everyday auto parts store. Welcome to Pep Boys, one of the biggest parts stores ever, with thousands more parts and accessories for more cars. More seat covers, floor mats, additives, and things smaller stores just can't fit. And, of course, more name brand parts with lifetime warranties and a low price guarantee. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Oh boy, am I... I can't stop. <laughs> and my body is... Oh, how am I ever gonna... Late night will liquid caps. Why is it the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever medicine? Why, so you can rest medicine, of course. All set? You bet I am. Thanks to you. A few weeks ago with Jesse, I noticed something. Dandruff. So I told him about Head & Shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away. Head & Shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. Because great hair can't have flakes. Welcome back to the big show that got even bigger tonight. We're here till 1 Eastern. The odds makers are treating the Eagles like the team that lost to the Cowboys in Week 10 instead of the Eagles that lost to the boys or beat the boys in Week 15. Philadelphia is listed as a two-touchdown underdog this Sunday in Dallas. And as Sal Palantonio reports, the Eagles have already gone south. It's warm and breezy here in Vero Beach, Florida, exactly what Ray Rhodes had in mind when he brought the Eagles to Dodger Town to get away from the ice and snow and man-made distractions common to Philadelphia around playoff time. I think it's just to isolate us a little bit and so we can really focus and concentrate on what we have to do. It's like going to a summer training camp. You know, we've all come down here to Florida with one thing in mind, you know, to practice, to get prepared, to play the best football game of our lives. I think Ray's doing the right thing here. It's not a vacation. No, no, he said that. He said that he stressed that. And just like he said, the fine started out at three grand. Johnson wanted to join Notre Dame alums Bobby Taylor and Ricky Waters at the Orange Bowl on Monday night, but they all decided they couldn't afford the fine if they missed the 1 a.m. curfew. This is all uh, what it's supposed to be. You know, it's a business trip. We're trying to take on America's team. Even after blowing out the Lions and beating the Cowboys last month, the Eagles go to Dallas, two touchdown underdogs, again getting no respect. None. None whatsoever. We'd rather in danger field of football right now. And uh, I think we got a point to prove, and we're going to prove it next Sunday at 1230. One important injury note. Starting right tackle Antone Davis told me he's still suffering from severe headaches from a concussion on Saturday night. Nothing that couldn't be cured by a round of golf with Randall Cunningham on the player's day off Tuesday. But Ray Rhodes told me Davis better be ready to go for Sunday's showdown in Dallas. In Vero Beach, Florida, I'm Sal Palantonio, ESPN. Two touchdown faves, huh? Both Dallas and Philadelphia went 5-3 and three in their final eight games. The Eagles' D allowed fewer points in the second half of the season. And the Eagles' running game kept pace with Emmett. Dallas was also a minus two in the turnover differential. The Eagles a plus three. 
In the AFC, if you like omens, you're taking the Bills Saturday. Bad weather forced the Pittsburgh Steelers indoors for practice at Duquesne University today, and as soon as they got inside, they had an illumination situation. That's right, lights out. Fortunately, the Steelers themselves don't believe in omens. Here's Mark Malone in Pittsburgh. Well, it's just another beautiful day here in Pittsburgh. Temperatures falling through the 30s. A light rain expected to change over to snow has forced the ground crew here to cover the field at Three Rivers. As a result, head coach Bill Cowher boarded his team on buses, who practiced indoors to a bubble set up at Duquesne University. Pittsburgh used their bye week to get some key people healthy, namely at running back in their season finale. The Steelers threw the ball 55 times against Green Bay, as Eric Pegram, John L. Williams, and Bam Morris were all sidelined with injuries. The only guy that probably is going to be questioned will be Bam, and, uh, you know, we've rested him, and, you know, he worked last week, so I think he'll be close to 100% by game time, and so, you know, we'll start with Eric and go with uh, that one-two combination. Speaking of running backs, Pittsburgh's defense, which ranks second in the NFL against the rush, must find a way to stop one of the most dangerous dual threats in the game today. Bills running back Thurman Thomas, who slashed the Dolphins defense for 200 combined yards last weekend. The Steelers are hoping that versatile inside linebacker Chad Brown can rise to the occasion after being out five and a half weeks with an ankle injury. When you get a guy like Chad Brown back, you know, in your defense, it allows you to, to do more things because Chad, he's the type of guy that he can, he can cover a Thurman Thomas or an opposing running back in the open field and bring him down. One player the Pittsburgh defense will not have on Saturday is cornerback Rod Woodson, who's still recovering from knee surgery. Back on November 14, 1994, the last regular season meeting between these two teams, Woodson played a major role in the Steelers' 23-10 win. How they defense the K-Gun without him remains to be seen. Reporting from Three Rivers, I'm Mark Malone, ESPN. The neatest thing about this game, it's the Bills averaging nearly 212 yards a game on the ground over the last four, facing the best defense in the AFC against the Rush, second best in the league. Not a basketball. There's Coppin State, which has won 33 straight at home. But other than that, the NCAA home court win streak, men's division, belongs to the running Utes of Utah, who have reeled off 26 in a row at Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. Guess who came into town trying to discontinue that run? The Utes intrastate rival, the BYU Cougars. Frank Layden doubling as mascot and color commentator. Todd Christensen from way downtown. Frank? Born in 1977, Frank. You've got sport coats older than that. I was going to say that. I got cheese older than that. Frank, you have your medical problems, and I have mine. Keith Van Horn, Nathan Cooper, and there they go. Somebody's calling a timeout in the middle of a fight. Van Horn was called for a tech. First half, we're tied at 33. Van Horn. No tech there. 16 first-half points. Still in the first half, the Cougars are running. Kenneth Roberts, hello. 11 first-half points. In the second, the Utes extend their lead. That's another Roberts brother. Ben Caton from way downtown, bang. 18 points. Then a little bit more Van Horn. <laughs> 29 points. 83-77. The streak stays alive. It's 27 in a row at Huntsman. Van Horn ends with 29 and 10 boards. Caton with 20. And Brian Ruffner had 26 for the losers uh, from BYU. The number 25, New Mexico Lobos, visiting Tark the Sharks Flying Circus at Fresno. First half, Dominic Young, the steal to Darnell McCullough. Hello. Game tied at six, but it would get higher scoring. Royce Olney to Clayton Shields. You can't stop Shields. Dave Bliss's club led 41-37 at the half. Kendrick Brooks, a three for Fresno. They're down by two. Then, from the corner, Brooks one more time. They left him alone, but he made them pay. Fresno up 65-62. Fresno by one. Lobo's last chance, and they don't get the shot off. Gah. Fresno wins. Fresno wins. 76-75. First time this season that uh, New Mexico had lost. They'd opened 10-0, and which had been their best start since 1973-74, which led them on to a 12-0 start in NCAA tournament bid. The Bulldogs have won four straight and improved to, as you can read at home, 7-4. and four. So to come on the show, our Tempe trio has some more thoughts on the Cornhuskers' victory and the controversial decision to start Lawrence Phillips. That's next. This is SportsCenter. Still searching for the perfect cold medicine? Alka-Seltzer Plus wears off after only four hours. NyQuil contains alcohol and won't even last through an eight-hour night. But there is a medicine that lasts all day or all night. Today's Contact. 
right from the first dose, Contact gives you 12 full hours of continuous congestion relief with its unique tiny time pills. Today's Contact. Relief that's fast. Relief that lasts. Little Caesars needs a celebrity for their new stuffed crust pizza combo. They don't charge a lot, so they can't afford a big name. What do you say? Dynamite! You still got it! They don't charge a lot, so they can't afford a big name. You're perfect. Little Caesars large cheese stuffed crust pizza and cheese stuffed crazy bread carried out just $8.99 or have it delivered. Delivery, delivery. When I got rid of my gray hair, I wanted a natural look, so I didn't take any chances. I used the sure thing for a natural look called Just for Men. Apply Just for Men and in five minutes, rinse. It's specially timed to blend away gray. Bring back your natural look and condition hair. It's a sure thing. Just for Men, the sure thing for a natural look. And now try Just for Men color gel for the hard to color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out, just five minutes. The day after his miracle, Wildcats lost to USC in the Rose Bowl. Northwestern coach Gary Barnett is looking at staying in Southern California. The Orange County Register and several other media outlets there reported that Barnett spoke with UCLA Athletic Director Pete Dallas Tuesday, his second contact with the school in three days about the job made vacant by Terry Donahue's resignation. Another report says Barnett's wife looked at houses in the area. And still another says that while Barnett may be satisfied by Northwestern's contract offer to him, he is not happy with their offers to his assistant coaches. No one, nowhere, has a comment on any of this on the record. Well, it was nearly a record, the third highest winning point total in a major bowl game ever. You saw it. Let's continue to analyze it. Chris Fowler leading our delegation at the Fiesta Bowl. Chris? All right, Keith, thank you very much. Nebraska players all week long have gone about their business with a methodical, workmanlike attitude that's almost scary, a single-mindedness. Florida players try to be a little looser and relax. In the media day, they were doing something called the choo-choo train, a invention of their special teams. Well, finally, after the game, with Nebraska players cutting loose and admitting they enjoy this kind of thing, and this looks like a little bit of mocking. <laughs> hey, they, they even do the choo-choo better in Florida, man. <laughs> You're right. They outflanked him even in the dancing department. <laughs> Afterward, Florida coach Steve Spurrier coming off a tremendous regular season, 12-0, a third consecutive SEC championship. A puzzled Spurrier talked about how his team was virtually devastated in every area. Uh, we did not come to the ballpark to play the best we could, and that's, I'm embarrassed about that. As coaches, we did a lousy job somehow or another, uh, but uh, we were outmatched. There, it's not often you oh, see Spurrier yeah, yeah. looking that puzzled and that humble. But I'll tell you, I don't think it's about preparation and out coaching and, and the fact that, that Florida hadn't been here before. It was just a physical mismatch, Craig. Early in the game, though, it was not a physical mismatch all the way. Florida went out, Chris Doring, and you could see him on those little slant patterns. Hang in there with me, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about, and I'll show you. Chris Doring went out early, and he had a chance. There was just the inch right in front of everybody. Doring was getting the little slants. They were completing the passes. But you know what happened? Nebraska made the adjustment, and he didn't do that anymore. Then Nebraska comes out, has an excellent play call in the backside screen pass for the touchdown. And let me tell you what that did. Two things. For Florida, that said to them on defense, we have no idea what they're going to do offensively. We're really screwed up in the mind right now. And for Nebraska's defense, they realized they could stick with the number one receiver for Florida. Lawrence Phillips, really an unbelievable player. Craig, we travel the country. We've seen Autry. We've seen Dunn. We've seen McElroy. Lawrence Phillips is the best running back I've seen in person this year. What'd you think? Well, I think he's the best running back. I, I cannot believe the amount of uh, strides of improvement he's had this year because now I consider him a number one pick in the NFL draft. He ran tonight with authority, vision, and a big... We looked at him one time on the sidelines. Guy's got a big old hump on him, too. He, he can run with power. Hump means the back end right there. All right, now, we did not see Eddie George. He's a great running back, but let's show you what Lawrence Phillips did against the Florida Gators. Notice right here, he's got good quickness, and boom, he's strong. He ran out. Now, watch this little quick right here, and then boom, to the outside. You know what? They told me he watched you demonstrate that run on the grass in the pregame show, and that's what he did. Let me tell you what Nebraska did. They rolled up their sleeve, and they said to Florida, come on. We're going to test you man-to-man -man and see who's a better man. Nebraska were better men up front, and that's why they won the ball game. Yes. They really 
besides the early touchdown pass to Phillips, almost disdained the forward pass and just went with the run in the power game. You're right about Phillips. Even his teammates said he was doing things in practice yeah. before this bowl game that he didn't do before his suspension. It makes you wonder, what if? What if you've been able to control his temper? Would the Huskers have had the Heisman Trophy winner at tailback? They had the runner-up as it was at quarterback. Now, of course, the offensive line, as we've said a lot, is really the system at Nebraska. Aaron Graham, the only returning starter from last year, the anchor of that line. After the ball game, he spoke with Steve Cyphers. What was the difference between this year and last year? Oh, tonight in this game between these two teams. I think uh, the team who prepared the hardest won the game. I really do. I think uh, we came out and showed everybody that uh, we were the best team in college football. We prepared hard for this game. Uh, we didn't take a, a long break after we, after the Oklahoma game, and uh, we just wanted to come in and, and prove to everybody that we were the best team in college football this year. How satisfying was it given the year to win the national championship, all that you went through? Absolutely, probably more satisfying than last year just for the fact that, uh, you know, we had a lot of people who who maybe lost a little faith in us or maybe were looking back, looking down on the program. And we, we wanted to come out and show people that, uh, you know, we're not a bunch of uh, bad guys. We're a, we're a bunch of college students and who uh, like playing college football. Aaron, can you finally appreciate your place in history? 36 wins in three years. No team has ever done that. Can you appreciate that? I think it's starting to sink in finally. Uh, you know, I think we went, we can say that we went three years uh, and basically there wasn't anybody in college football who could play with us. And, uh, you know, disregarding the, the Florida State game, and, you know, we, we probably should have won that one too. So it's been a fun, fun, fun career here. Terrific. Thanks, Aaron. It's nice to hear a Nebraska yep. player appreciate it. You watch their bench as this whipping is unfolding and they're still stoic you want to just see them smile and embrace each other what they've done is amazing over the past three years and we'll come back and have some final thoughts from tempe after this then back to dan patrick thank you guys every time he says my name they cheer <laughs>